Hey, this is YBR with a pre-alpha version of Homebrew Vehicle Sandbox. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start a new game and play around in a bit to give you guys an idea what this game is really about. So when you first start the game, you just got a nice simple tutorial that says this is how you move. Use WASD and left shift to run. You know, the basics for a game. And then you have the uh, next sentence, which really describes the game in one simple sentence. Homebrew is all about inventing vehicles. And we already have some vehicles in our inventory. If we open the inventory, we can see them. So when we open the inventory, we can select the vehicle. Normally, you would only have three vehicles here, but I have four abominations that I have made as well. We're going to stick to the vehicles they have made because they are better than the ones I've made. So there's a drag racer, a rocket racer, and a buggy. We're going to use the buggy for now. And the way it works is once you design a vehicle, you're free to spawn it wherever you want, whenever you want, as many times as you want. Just whenever. So like, let's say you spawn it and you put it on a hill and it rolls away. Just spawn a new one. If you drive it for a bit, flip it over. Just spawn a new one. That is how it works. You just spawn a new one anytime something bad happens to your old one. It runs out of gas, just spawn a new one. And that is at least for this version of the game. In future versions, I don't know if that will necessarily be the case. And then when, once you have your vehicle spawned, though, you can go ahead and get into it and then you can drive it around. And the way the game works right now is your main goal is actually just to design the vehicles and have fun. But you do need a way, you do need to unlock some of the parts you you use to, uh, to um, excuse me there. You do need to unlock some of the parts you would use to design your vehicle. And to do that, you need to collect these uh, little clicky things that have bolts in them that work as a, a type of currency in the game. And there's three different types of currencies, and I'll explain that more later. But for now, we're just going to drive around and collect enough up for the game to say, OK, you're good to go. Let's go to the next step in the tutorial. But for now, we're just going to drive around and uh, collect them. We're using a relatively slow car here, but there are much faster vehicles that can go up to like 400 miles per hour and flip over the second you hit a, a pothole. And uh, I should probably use that one eventually. But for now, we're using one I can actually control so we're not just flipping and flying all over the place. But this one is just a normal vehicle. It has engines and wheels and it actually has a little bit of aerodynamics to uh has active aerodynamics like a lot of supercars to make it a more superior handling car yes that is why it has that i guess uh but the way it works is we're just driving around like any other car car game wasd even with all those wings they all just work in sync and once i get to the car designing thing i'll show you how that all really works and right now you saw the three things they show and the three things you start with those are all cars there are more than just cars to this game, it's just when you first start out that is all you can build is cars, but eventually you can make planes, boats, and kind of like blimpish things I think as well. So it's not limited to just cars, it's only limited to cars when you first start and when you collect them parts and building things up. Then you can do the flying things and the crazy things and stuff. And I think we're almost there for the number of bolts we need to collect and then we'll be able to go ahead and go to the next part of the uh, tutorial and show you guys the, to me, most fun part about the game, which is building cars and stuff. Because the driving's just okay. It's, oh, look at that. We can get up this hill. And I don't think it's because we ran out of gas. I think it's just it's, it's too steep of a hill. So you know what? Let's use a, a more powerful car. A much powerfuller car. So we just switch cars just effortlessly like that, and then we get a new car, and then it's rolling away. Oh, this is bad. Oh, hey, it says we uh, collected enough things yet? Nope. I thought the words changed. Let's go over here and collect things. So this is the car that's really fast. It goes 256 speed. So maybe not miles per hour. Whatever one speed unit is, it can go 400 of them at least. Even maybe I know even 500, I'm pretty sure. Uh, as long as you have a flat enough surface. This thing is is a stupid fast vehicle. That is just, it'll flip on a dime. Not churn on a dime. It'll flip on a dime if you hit a pothole going at ludicrous speeds. See, look at this. Oh, oh, and it is very slippery to drive, and it is, yeah, it's a death trap. It is a death trap, but it is a fun death, tra death trap to drive. It, it, it literally just is like a, a chair with an, a rocket strap to it. Look, it is literally a chair with four wheels and a rocket strap to it, and then that's it. That is what this vehicle is. So anyways, though, it says we collected enough orbs so we can go ahead and get some new parts and go to the dome. We're going to the dome slowly. As you see, we're busy being upside down right now, okay? We'll get to the dome soon. See, I think we're totally stuck upside down. Yep, we're upside down. Let's go ahead and write, write ourselves up. So like I said, if you ever flip over anything, just spawn a new vehicle. Nice and simple. And we'll make our way to the dome at a fast and reckless pace. That'll probably flip us over four times in the process, but we'll still get there faster than using another car. Okay, yep, we flipped over. Told you it'd be fast and reckless. You thought I was lying? This is fast and reckless. That's what this thing's all about. Go. 
And, like I said, then we'll get to the car designing part, which is, to me, the uh, more fun aspect of this. Sure, the driving around is neat, but the designing stuff is, to me, a lot more fun. Oh, goodness. And one thing that's coming up in a future update is the way the handling works is uh, going to be tweaked. So where you could choose, do you want your tires to be really grippy or slippery, based on, like, the tire compound or something like that. Which should make uh, handling a bit easier, because, and hopefully, well... I think you probably flip over all the time no matter what when you're trying to go 500 speeds per second and crashing into everything like I am. I don't think that'll help. But I just wanted to say that the handling physics are going to be fairly re-ramped, it seems like, in the next version, which might be the version coming out on Steam in November. And this is November, so it might be coming out real soon. I'm not 100% on that kind of stuff. Um, but there is, it is planned to come out on Steam in November 2014. I do know that. So anyways, we finally made it to the dome, which means we can go to the warehouse and talk about how all the currency stuff works. So the way the currency stuff works is there's three different colors of currency. There's a gray, green, and red currency. And when you buy something, some things only require a gray currency, some things require multiple colors of currency. So if we wanted a hovercraft propeller, we would need nine gray currencies and two green ones. So we can't buy that. But if we wanted you know, a vertical tail wing, we could buy that and you just click it three times and that buys you one of them with using your gray currency. Now we have three less than before and that is how you buy parts. Now you already start off with enough parts to make a basic vehicle, but if you want to make something more complex, you're going to want to buy those parts. And I actually have a save game that has more parts in it, which we'll load up in a minute. But first let's go to Danny and talk to Danny. Danny has some, uh, man, Danny has some eye problems, I think. He's a, uh, he got a lazy eye right there. Hi, Danny. And he's like, glad to see you're back safe. And he needs help on something. See that ride? He, he, he didn't do it right. He didn't do his ride right. Uh, so he's been, he's been polishing it for a long time now. It sure looks like you have. You couldn't even find four tires that are the same size. Come on. Anyways, that's the Dan Van. But Dan Van can't drive without an engine. So I have to install an engine for him. No big deal. And that is how the tutorial works. We're going to go ahead and use the tutorial real quick just to give you guys a well you know I don't need a tutorial I've made a car before I could show you guys how to build a car without a tutorial hopefully oh I didn't know you could bump this oh you could bump the hand truck yeah take that hand truck you aren't the boss of me can we bump that nope that's too big I never noticed we could bump the hand truck can we bump these other things here see I never went around bumping things before oh no not the water cooler I need my hydration all right there we go water cooler is fine you could use this as a skateboard. Oh, never mind. You can't use this skateboard. It flipped over. Oh, there's all this stuff we could push around. Okay, enough of that. Let's uh, let's design a vehicle from start to finish. We're not going to repair his vehicle for the tutorial. I'm just going to build my own vehicle because, like I said, I should know what I'm doing. So we're just going to make a new vehicle. And then we're going to... I always just use a random name on it. So this is called Finn. So we're just going to hit Create New Vehicle and make ourselves a vehicle. Okay, so the way the vehicle editor works is you have four stages, really of building it. The first one is the pipe builder and the way this works is you just you can set down blocks and pipes to make special shapes that you really want in your car. So let's say you wanted something that had uh, I don't know let's say how about you wanted something that had a bunch of cubes in a row like this and then it had a back row of cubes as well like you have a box alright I don't know why you would want this on the car but let's just say you wanted a box like this that had a pipe that stuck out of it like this, and then it goes to there. I don't know why you'd want that. You Maybe you want a giant looking, something that looks like a giant lock on it for some reason. I don't know why you'd want that, but let's say you wanted that. You can make that shape and then use it in your car. Or if you wanted something more actual, actually usable, you can make something that's just a really, really long section like this that goes out and then maybe curves a little bit just to give your car a special look that you want. Like you want to look where it has a smooth front end and I don't know. If you want any certain look, though, you can you can build that, and then you can use that shape in your car. So let's say that's the shape we wanted in our vehicle. And I say car just because that's all I've ever built. But like I said, there's more than just cars. But let's say you wanted that shape, and you're gonna name it my you're gonna name it special shape. And you see the camera moves around while you type, which is kind of funny. And then you can use your special shape in your vehicle. And that's not necessary though. It, it comes with pre-made shapes where you don't need to do that. But that's just if you wanted to. So the way it works is we're going to the next stage now, which is the frame builder. And the way that works is you go up here and you click this little tiny word right here. That is the browser. And then you can choose a part to add to your build area, I guess you could say. Now, there's no images to show you what's what, which is really a little bit of a pain. Because you never quite know what's what. And I'm pretty sure that that will come in an update. There's no way it won't. But the way it works is you pick your parts you want and then you spawn them out. So let's say I want my fancy little shape I made here. 
And then each shape is based as a cube on its edge like this. And you can pick any face of the cube, and once you pick the face, then you can attach it to something. So you attach it like that, and it's like, I don't want it to go like that. No, that was terrible. So you spin it around, and then it goes like that. That is how it works. And we made a candy cane. That's all we made. <laughs> oh, well. So, the, but, uh, oh, by the way, the way you rotate is you hit that blue thing. The blue thing rotates it like, woo! And you could get, you drop a piece. If you put it in the wrong spot, you just middle click it. That was actually in the right spot, though, so I don't know why I middle clicked it. So we're going to rotate it again. There we go. One piece is up and ready. Then we're going to do the same thing for this one. And we're just going to make a real weird looking design just to kind of give you an idea of all the things you can do. So like that. There you go. If you want a design that looks like that in your vehicle, that's how you get it. Actually, you know what? Let's do uh, here. Let's use more of my special shape. I like my special shape. It actually looks kind of neat. So we could go. Let's see. How could we do this? If we go like this, it'll probably look kind of neat. So you go boom. Oh, look at that. It kind of looks neat. There's a little bit of overlapping on the parts. That's fine. I don't care. I think it looks cool. Look at that. That's a weird looking thing, isn't it? That's actually the wrong direction. So that's why you say, oops, take it off. Try it again. See, look at that. I made a... It actually kind of looks cool, doesn't it? I don't know. But you, like, you can make shapes. Is what I'm getting at. You can make crazy shapes if you wanted to. You could go back in the pipe editor, make a special shape just for your vehicle. One time use, it doesn't matter. But there are things that come with the game, so you don't need to do that if you don't want to. So you can have like curve five, and it's just a curve pipe like that. Just a nice, simple curve pipe. And you can use these to build up your vehicle as well. So like, I don't know what you're doing really with your vehicle, but let's say you build it like this. And actually, how about let's go to the other side? That doesn't make sense at all. I haven't see that's the problem. I'm just doing I'm just shoving pieces all over the place so nothing really makes sense, huh? We're gonna make it make sense in the end. We're gonna have a crazy ground clearance on this. Yes, that is the idea. We're gonna have some huge ground clearance by using these pieces right here. That is the idea. So there we go. Here's the ground clearance power. And uh let's go ahead and make it long. We're gonna make this like a drag racer or something, I don't know. So we can go ahead and use some of the pre made shapes again. So you can use like this one. So you can say boom, give me that block. And then you can put the block right there. Oops. There we go. Like that. And I like to put a block in the middle section just because that way it doesn't leave a blank spot. And then we can put that there though, like I said. And then we can go ahead and get a line four, I think is the one I'm thinking of. Oh, that was, a, oh well. We'll just get a bunch of them. And we're just going to stack these on the back and make it go out a bit. So we're going to go boom. 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 And then we're going to attach these. And I'm just making a crazy shape. I know. I'm just get, Like I said, I'm just doing whatever I feel like to make sure I show off the things you can do. So there we go. We made a very unusual shape for a vehicle. This doesn't look like a vehicle at all. It's going to have some amazing ground clearance. I'll tell you that much. I don't know what else it'll have, but it'll have some ground clearance. So that's basically making the shape of a vehicle. That's making the frame. And like I said, there's some pre-made parts you could use, and then you can make your own. Like, I want a really long pipe, so I made a really long pipe a while ago. We can use this as like a battering ram. We just stick it right there. This is our battering ram for stabbing people with. I don't know. Or it looks. It almost looks like a gun with a tripod set up. I don't know why I made that. Anyways, though, so that is how you make the frame. When you're totally done, you hit the, uh, I think it's called bake. Yep, the bake button. And you could give it a name. So you say, I want it to be called uh, cake. Because we baked it, so we'll call it the cake. And once that's done, you can go ahead and go to the Vehicle Builder, which is where you load in. Whoops, not load in. Ah, hit the wrong button. Well, you go up here, and then you choose a frame. And you can actually reuse frames for multiple things, so that's kind of nice. But we're going to use cake right here. And then you got to put the frame on that block again. So we're going to just say, try to grab it from the underside. One thing that is kind of difficult is grabbing pieces from the underside sometimes, but there we go. And we're going to place it right there. There we go. That is the frame attached up. Whoa, that's kind of neat. I scratched my eye and put my hand in front of my microphone and it echoes. Um, but anyways, then we could add some of the uh, not frame related parts, like a seat to sit down in. So we pick a seat and then we click that little button. That button is how you spawn anything, by the way. You click the piece and you hit that button if you haven't gotten that by now. I never mentioned it, but I figured you could see it, so you probably understand that. So then we could put a seat right there. I have no idea what I'm making at all. It's this weird thing. I didn't plan it. That's the thing. If you're making a car, you should just get some graph paper and plan it out. Be like, oh yeah, this will look cool if I do it like this. Don't just go willy-nilly crazy like me. It's a bad idea. So we get that. Then we're going to go ahead and get a V6 engine, which is actually terribly slow, but that's okay. And we're going to stick it. You know, we need two V6 engines, so it would be symmetrical. Uh, so we're going to stick this right here with plants to add another V6 later on. Oh, not there. I clicked too early. 
Let me just drop it off. Like, get out of there, V6. Oh, this is weird. I need to... Let me clean it up and respawn it, because it's kind of hard to see where it is. There we go. So we can go ahead and set a V6 engine wherever we want. And you saw there was a rocket engine on the other vehicle. This one's just a V6. How boring, I know. You can't buy the rocket engine yet. We don't have enough money. It's too sad. You know what? I don't know about that. Put the V6 over here, then. There we go. That looks better. Put it right next to the driver, so if anything goes wrong, you just slap it a bit with a wrench while you're driving, and it'll be totally fine. See, it's a good thing we got all that ground clearance, so we can put the engine right there. And like I said, eventually the plan is to have two V6s strapped next to each other. We only have enough money for one, though, I think. Yup. Okay, I could go buy one right now, but I won't worry about it. So then we need some fuel tanks, probably. That sounds like a logical thing to add, so we'll just... Whoa, I hit the... I didn't even click it. I thought I clicked it. Weird. We're going to add a fuel tank, so we're just going to grab it and say, how do we put the fuel tank? Where do we want the fuel tank? We'll put it right here, right in front of the driver. And you fill it up right there. You just stick it in there, and that way, when you, if you hit somebody too hard with your spear, the whole thing blows up because the fuel tank blows up, and that is the plan for the way the car is built. It's like a reverse Pinto. It's not a good thing, by the way. And then we can go ahead and, ooh, we can put a plane propeller on it. Why? I don't know. Should we? No. This isn't a plane. This is a car. We have some plane parts. We have, like, the the tail wings and the propeller. Not enough to actually fly, though. I've tried with just those parts. It doesn't work. Uh, next thing we can get, though, is a wheel hub, which is where you attach your wheels. We're going to need four of those, then. Thankfully, we do have four of them. And once you have those, we can attach it to where we are planning to put the wheels. And like I said, we're making this thing with some crazy ground clearance. I don't know exactly what it is, or I'm making it all. But it's just this crazy, weird thing that hopefully drive. I mean, it should drive. Because I've made a vehicle by hand that drives, so I don't see why I wouldn't. And go ahead and put all those wheel hubs on and spin them around so they all are orientated the right direction. Look at that. And that should be everything we need, I believe, for just a simple vehicle. Let me uh, do a quick double check. I mean, we could actually put wings and gliders and all that and use that as well. But it's not necessary for a simple vehicle. So we're going to go ahead and hit bake. And that'll get that nice and ready for the next stage, which is the tuning area. Tuning area, yes. There we go. I had to read that. So the way the tuning area works is this is where you have to connect every part to what it controls. So like this engine here, for example, you have to say, what wheels does it power? Do you want a front-wheel drive? Do you want rear-wheel drive? Do you want all-wheel drive? Do you want unsymmetrical drive like this in chaos? No. We're going to make this all-wheel drive. So what we do is we click the engine, we hit the link button, and then we click all the little uh, highlighted triple arrow things like that, and that will link the engine to those. And then, when you hit the gas, the engine will drive there. Or will drive those wheels, I mean. That's how it works. And then for the engine, you could also change the, the gear ratio and the buttons it uses. The buttons it uses is a little confusing. But that's being reworked in a future version, I know. They said that is the first thing they're working on after they get it on Steam. But the way that works is confusing because every control is called, like, axis vertical 1, axis vertical 2. And it means the controls on your keyboard or mouse or controller or whatever you're using and it's kind of confusing like that so that is though how you attach the engine to the wheels and then for the wheels you could uh, hold shift by the way to select multiple things it's kind of like selecting files in your computer you hold shift to select multiple and hold control to select multiple too either way really works I'm pretty sure nope hold shift works better uh, or you could just collect one by just single clicking uh, like I said basically using computer stuff but you could change the tires on these things there's a quite a different few amounts I said ground clearance here so we're gonna go for the the huge dirt tires like that I don't know if this engine will even have enough torque to move those but I don't care and then you're gonna say how do you want these things controlled so you say you hit link and then you choose the seat which is what you're gonna control everything by and um, oh you could uh, change the maximum angle that the tires turn at so if you're having like a crazy crazy car you can have a 70 degree maximum turning radius which is something quite insane so let's see if we go to on physics mode so we could actually whoa I guess that's fine that's totally fine uh, but then you hit the, the seat and you can actually control things a little bit you can see just how much it churns like uh, oh goodness I forgot the key to do this uh, give me a second to think 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 thinking did I actually put it to control it? Okay, I did. Thinking, thinking, thinking. What did I do wrong? Oh, 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 I know. I didn't put the wheels to uh, actually be steering wheels. You have to make sure you tell it to steer. And speaking of that, I have to make sure these are left wheels and not right wheels. Otherwise, everything will be really bad. So there we go. That should make it work now. So we could do a quick check to see if it works. There we go. Look at that churning. 
That is stupid extreme churning, which you will not be able to actually use. Just to give you an idea, though, of what you can do. We don't need that. Let's put it down to 50. 50 should be a reasonable... Well, 40 should be a reasonable number. 50 is still kind of extreme. The default is 10, which is, to me, not enough. I need to be able to churn this thing a lot. So you go, whoop, there we go. That looks more reasonable. And that was how, that is how you hook up the wheels, hook up the engine. you got to hook up your fuel tank to... Oh, you got to exit physics first. Then you got to hook up your fuel tank to the engine. And then you have a car you could actually drive, I think. If I did everything I think I should do, we should drive. It's a very basic vehicle, but it should drive. So we're going to go ahead and hit physics. Oops. Hit physics on. Lock the camera in place. Go to control mode. And let's see. So we got the steering. And I thought I locked the camera. Lock the camera in place so you can actually try to drive it a bit. So we got the steering and the engine won't turn on, but I can't remember if it does that in this mode anyway. So I'm going to hope that it doesn't. Maybe I need to put oh, I need to put input controller onto the chair so that way you can control the gas of the engine with the the chair. There we go. That would have been bad. I would have forgotten that. That would have been really terrible. Good thing I remembered. So now I should be able to accelerate. So camera locked. Control mode. Control mode. Turn the engine on, and it makes noise and. It almost moves. I don't think it is enough torque to move these tires. <laughs> Smaller tires it is. Tires, you're too big. You need to chill out. I don't know why it happened to switch them all out to one by ones instead of stacking them. Usually it stacks them out so you can do them all at the same time. It must have been something I hit. Those are some dinky tires. That'll work great. If it's the problem I thought it was, it'll work great. If it's something else, it won't work at all. Still. There we go. See? And then we have a car. Look at that. It doesn't look like a car at all. But we made a car. We could go stab people with it. And this is not a car. I know. It's a very unusual looking thing, but it's my thing. I made it. But that's, that's how the uh, whole building thing works. That's how it works. And then you hit bake again when you're done. You can also take a picture of it if it didn't drive away all on its own to see what it looks like. There you go. There's also this button here that just connects everything to the chair. And I I don't trust it. <laughs> I'm like, because to me, I need to click each part and make sure it's there. I know it'll do half the things, but then the other half, I don't trust myself to remember is what I should say. I know it'll connect everything to the chair. It's the other half of things I'll probably forget to do. Um, but that's a, that is a fully designed vehicle. And it's terrible. So let's, uh, let's get out of here and, uh, We'll use one of the other vehicles I designed just to give you an idea of something you can make that's also equally dumb. I will say that right now. But at least it works. Let's go and load up another game where I have some more parts. I think it was save 8. Hopefully it was save 8. Pretty sure it was save 8. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and use this one. It's just a, The name is a default name. It's called the Reign of Pain. It's like a half flying vehicle because I only have half the flying parts and I tried to make something that flies and it doesn't. You can see it has like four engines on it and a propeller engine. So those engines, those engines control the wheels, and I have I have steering by the wheels and the the uh, aerodynamics, and it is still totally uncontrollable. It kind of flies, but not really. You see, it's kind of flying right now, but not really because it's not made to fly because it doesn't have all the parts for a plane because I couldn't buy them yet. And it flipped over, which is not good. We gotta respawn it. And like I said, the way the game works is you flip it over, you respawn it. Then you're good to go. Look at that, we got this spinning propeller. Oh, I flipped it over. <laughs> that was fast. Yeah, it's not a stable vehicle, I'll tell you that much right now. It's a stupid thing that I made, and it kind of works. The frame is actually not even mine, I admit that. All I did was strap some engines to it, and some wheels. That's all I did. The other one was the frame I actually made. This one is one that came with the, um, the game. So it has parts you could use, like I said. And you see, we got 244 of these metals. Oh, this is, see, this is, this is, like, I tried to make it to fly. That's the problem. I tried to make it to fly, so when you try to turn, it just rolls over. That's not how flight works, by the way. You don't just barrel roll everywhere, or area roll everywhere. You, you actually churn. But the problem is, I can't design a plane good yet, not good enough to actually make it fly or have the parts for it. So that is, um, that is on the, uh, plan for later if I ever play this game again on video. I don't know. I definitely will play it again, uh, off camera, though. And it's up to you guys, really, if you'd want to see more or not, if you're interested. Uh, feel free to leave a comment saying you are. Otherwise, 
Till next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.